Good day everybody. Welcome to my course on stress analysis of heat exchanger piping system using Caesar 2 software. In the background, you can see that there are several cell and tube type heat exchangers which are used in some petrochemical complex. So this type of heat exchangers you can easily found in various refineries, chemical plants, power plants and many other plants. So heat exchangers are a very important equipment in oil and gas industry. In this course, we will be learning how to model these heat exchangers and perform stress analysis using the software that is developed by Hexagon known as Caesar 2. The main points that I will be covering in this course are introduction, then what are heat exchangers. In this part, we will be learning what are the main importance of heat exchangers and what device we call a heat exchanger means actually what definition of heat exchangers and what are the purpose they serve then types of heat exchangers for oil and gas industries then various types of heat exchangers that are most widely used in oil and gas industries we will be learning the names of those and a short definition next Temperature profile for heat exchanger. In the next section, we will be learning how to create temperature profile for heat exchangers. In this specific course, we will be learning the heat exchanger profile creation for cell and tube heat exchangers. And we will be giving example of two types of cell and tube heat exchanger. One is cell and tube heat exchangers without any expansion below in the cell part. And the second one is cell and tube heat exchanger with an expansion below in the cell part. And the temperature profile creation for both types are quite different that we will be learning. In the next section, we will be learning about the modeling the exchangers, how to model the exchangers and the its nozzle. Then nozzle load qualification, then the steps to know the nozzle load that is calculated and from where we will be getting the allowable nozzle load values and what are the options to qualify the nozzle loads and towards the end we will be learning a practical case study of a cell and tube heat exchanger modeling. So this constitutes the complete content of this course so you can understand from this content itself that this course is suitable for all piping stress engineers specifically who are at the beginner or intermediate stage who have not performed any stress analysis connected to these systems with heat exchanger then mechanical engineers who want to learn the working philosophy and stress analysis methodology of cell and tube heat exchanger connected piping systems and piping engineers, lead engineers who reviews the stress analysis reports from other organizations, they are also eligible to attend this course. So as the scope or content of the course is clear, let's move on to the introduction part. A heat exchanger is a mechanical device that is used to exchange heat between fluids. So the main purpose of every heat exchanger used in any service or any plants is to exchange the heat. It simply exchanges heat from one fluid to other fluid. Now the fluid used for heat transfer operation can be in the gas or liquid phase as per the availability. So Heat exchangers can be used for gaseous service as well as liquid service, not only liquid service. So even sometimes inside the heat exchanger two phase flow may also occur. So this is specifically applicable for gas, liquid or even two phase flow fluid services. The number of fluids used for heat transfer operation may be two or more. As from the definition or from the basic understanding, you can understand that minimum two fluids has to be there to exchange because one will be losing heat and other will be 
gaining heat so one fluid temperature will be reducing and other fluid temperature will be increasing a properly designed heat exchanger can be used for both heating and cooling operation so based on application heat exchanger can serve the purpose of either heating or cooling as one of the fluid will be cooling and other another fluid will be heating now in the oil and gas industry various types of heat exchangers are used there are various types of heat exchangers which are used in oil and gas industry which we will be learning shortly now what are heat exchangers what is the definition of a heat exchanger a heat exchanger is a device that transfers heat between two or more fluids keeping them separate while allowing the transfer of thermal energy so fluids does not mix with each other they remain separated inside the chambers one will be in cell parts other will be in channel parts or tubes so those fluids will not mix with each other but they will be simply transferring heat from one to another the hot fluid will be transferring their heat to the cold fluid thus cold fluid will become heated and hot fluid will become cooler every heat exchanger in general consists of the following parts all these parts cumulatively function to work as heat exchangers and transfer heat from one fluid to another so these are the typical parts or components that heat exchangers usually have tubes or channels then cell and casing tube seats fluid inlet and outlet nozzles baffles or fins pass partitions dividers heat transfer surface turbulators insulation and cladding gaskets or seals flanges bypass valve drain valve side glasses bypass dampers distributor and collectors pressure and temperature sensors etc every heat exchanger may not have all these components but maybe com consists of some of these components but in general these are the components that are that consist or that is that every heat exchanger composed or consist of and all these parts cumulatively help the heat exchanger to perform their function or intended service now here is a typical image you can see it is a cell and tube type heat exchanger and the parts are mentioned at the below with proper number some typical parts are you can see this is the channel section or tube section this is the one will be inlet other will be outlet in general top side will be inlet so fluid will be coming through this part then we will be moving through the tubes then from here it will be again turning and then the fluid will be going out from this outlet nozzle whereas for cell side one will be inlet and other will be outlet so let's assume that this is the inlet so fluid will be flowing this way from here then this way and finally we will be moving out through the outlet nozzle so with this process through the heated tubes heat will be released to the fluid of the cell side fluid and it will be heated the main components that will be specifically required for stress analysis purpose or modeling purpose are these nozzles inlet and outlet nozzles of channel side inlet and outlet nozzles of cell side the dimensions of this in saddles one will be fixed one will be sliding that we have to identify the materials and temperature pressure and other parameters as we all know that during modeling or analysis those parameters or process parameters will be required so this is a typical components of heat exchangers
now types of heat exchangers the heat exchangers that are most widely used in most process plants like refineries chemical plants petrochemical plants oil and gas industries are cell and tube heat exchangers plate type exchangers spiral exchangers double pipe exchangers and air cooled heat exchangers these are the major type of heat exchangers that are prevalent in the oil and gas industry now let's learn a brief definition of each of these types so cell and tube heat exchangers are elongated steel cylindrical vessels containing bundles of parallel tubes liquid passes through inside of the cell over the exterior side of the tubes causing necessary exchange of heat between the two liquids now what are plate exchangers plate exchangers are generally used in low pressure low temperature applications and are made up of end, end covers carrying bars inlet and outlet nozzles plates and gaskets the exchanger plates having spacing between them for liquid flow now what are spiral exchangers spiral heat exchangers are of circular construction consisting of an assembly of two long strips of plate wrapped to form a pair of concentric spiral passages alternate edges of the passages are closed so that liquid flows through continuous channels what are double pipe exchangers the double pipe exchangers is used when one liquid has a greater resistance to heat flow than another and when the surface area is small the double pipe exchanger consists of a pipe within a pipe both pipes have return bend at one end now air cooled heat exchanger an air cooler or air cooled heat exchangers are also known as air fin fan cooler consists of fin tube bundles with a header box attached to each end supported horizontally by a steel frame or structure the cooling medium in this case is air instead of a liquid and because of that air cooled exchangers are known as air cooler or air cooled heat exchangers now in this course we will be specifically learning about the stress analysis methodology of cell and tube type heat exchangers as they are the most widely used type of heat exchangers in the oil and gas industries so it is better if we understand the working methodology of cell and tube heat exchangers for that i have taken two animation videos from which you can easily understand how a cell and tube heat exchanger works some of the component parts are also mentioned here you can see here the tube side inlet tube side outlet cell side outlet cell side inlet and these are the intermediate tubes and this is tube seat this is head cover horizontal waffle tube bundles cell cover and this side is head cover this is cell side support both are cell side support or known as saddle support one will be fixed one will be sliding let's see the animation you see fluid is flowing how through the tubes and then coming out and in this process they are exchanging heat let's see this animation now here it is showing cell side single pass you see fluid is entering here and forming a u turn the fluid is flowing in the cell side then through outlet nozzle it is going out now see the tube side flow fluid is entering 
through the inlet nozzle of the channel then it is flowing through the tubes and while flowing you see here temperature gradient profile the temperature of the fluid is changing from hotter to cooler and at the end through the outlet cooler fluid is going out this is tube side then this is the combined flow so hot fluid is entering and through which this cell side cold fluid is entering and both are flowing together one through tube side other through cell side and in the process they are exchanging heat the hot fluid is losing heat and the cold fluid is gaining heat and the continuous operation of the cell and tube heat exchanger is going on in the process industries this way so hope these animations are quite clear to explain the working methodology of cell and tube heat exchanger Now inputs required for stress analysis. So as we will be learning the methodology for cell and tube heat exchangers, we will be discussing about that inputs only. So main inputs or major inputs required for modeling and analysis of cell and tube heat exchangers are equipment geo drawing with all dimension. And this is true for any equipment modeling. You must have the equipment geo drawing before you proceed for the modeling of the equipment because from that general arrangement drawing you will be getting the dimensions of each element starting from nozzle cell part channel part or tube part etc then design parameters also will be mentioned there materials also will be mentioned there then fixed and sliding saddle so while you will be analyzing you have to know which saddle is fixed and which saddle is sliding based on that the thermal movement will be different to each nozzle so fixed and sliding saddle information is required while modeling or analysis of cell and tube heat exchangers but during initial phase of the project you may not know the fixed side and sliding side during that time based on your stress analysis you can suggest or you can consider one of the saddles as fixed and other as saddle and that information you can pass on to your mechanical team and through them to the manufacturer so they will be considering that saddle as fixed and the other as the sliding one then cell side and channel side inlet and outlet design and operating parameters so those are also required to create proper temperature profile some organizations use the data mentioned in the general arrangement drawing itself while some other organizations use the data that is mentioned in the line list so whatever philosophy philosophy your organization prefers you can use that methodology if you want the modeling to be based on the line parameters then from line list you take the line parameters of the connected nozzles inlet and outlet and then write down in your general arrangement drawing those parameters for creating proper temperature profile so that's all for this introduction module hope you are quite clear of the scope and what i will be covering in this course that's all for now thank you